welcome to episode 19 of the Disconnected Gamers Podcast, where we reconnect with life and gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Andrew. With me as always... It's your boy, Mike. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. So give you the date. It is April 26th. And, as I always do say, the weather is nice. The weather <laughs> is nice. Well, it's because I'm so psyched that it's not fucking snowing anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. I just got to shout it out from the rooftops. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to talk Mortal Kombat 10, Mortal Kombat X, and how violent and gross it is. Oh, Jesus. So, I just think, like, I think it's over the top. It pretty much is. Like, and, like, I was reading some articles. So- Super cringeworthy. Yeah, that, and that's pretty much what people said. Like, oh, the first time I saw such and such as fatality, like, I cringed. Yep. And then, you know, they were like, but after, like, the tenth time, it was just kind of whatever. Yeah, you've seen it enough. What's like, mm, yeah. But I still cringe. I, yeah, the, the scorpion slicing the face off. Nope. Oh, and you see the tongue at the end? Yeah, the second is even weird. worse. Because each, each character has two. Fatalities or two versions of doing that? Two fatalities. And then there's added brutalities. So like uh, Kung Lao has a grab where if you finish it with the brutality, he keeps punching till he punches your head off. So wait, what's the difference between a brutality and a fatality? A brutality is like ended with a combo. Okay. So you can like combo and you can combo into it. So like I was saying with Kung Lao, he'll... He has a grab where he'll just keep punching in the face, but then he just drops you. But in the brutality, he keeps punching till he punches your face off. So it's like a different version of a fatality, essentially. Oh, uh, okay. But they're still pretty bad. Yeah, well, uh, Josh was streaming it um, on Radio PlayStation. And, yeah, they were doing, like, King of the Hill. And, you know, obviously there was this one kid who was just destroying everybody. So it was just, you know, you just kept watching the same people die. Yeah. But, um, yeah, some of these, some of these things, it's so over, it's just over the top. And I think for me, the problem is, is just graphically mm-hmm. way too real, you know? But, and, oh, and like, I, you I know, see that. You gotta, you gotta go back to like, when you saw these on, like, Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo. 8-bit, whatever, 16-bit. It looked ridiculous uh, then. It's true. So now it doesn't look ridiculous, and it's just, like, the progression of, the, you know, the technology allowing <coughs> us to make them look super, super realistic. My problem is, is I really wish they didn't. Uh, yeah. Like, can you, turn it, can you turn any of that off so that you don't see it if a person does a fatality to you? I don't know. It's a good question. I had I don't recall seeing the gore off option. So, because yeah. like I know on some games you can turn gore on or off. Right. Like I well, know in Borderlands you can do it. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I know on here most people respect each other, and like before the match, they're like, "Hey, you want to do fatalities or no?" And most times it's like, "Well, you know, let's just not." And then they'll just like punch you at the end when it says finish him, and they won't do the fatality. Why? What's the? Is it? I don't, well, I don't get. It, it's just. It's just like a respect thing. Instead of humiliating them with the fatality, you know, you just you just don't do it out of respect. Really. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. More so, yeah, with that, yeah. Hmm. So this. So you. You're in, like. Are you talking lo- open lobbies with randoms or? Kind of, yeah. Huh. Like yeah. I think they'll talk about it and stuff like that. Interesting. I mean, that's kind of cool because I would be like, don't because it makes me sick. But then somebody would fucking do it and I'd be like, you ass. Yeah, just to be that guy. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the thing. Like, I don't give a shit if the person wants to do the fatalities. Like, I'd be like, whatever. I just wish there was a way for me to shut it off so I don't have to see it. Oh, you don't have to see it. Yeah, Yeah, gotcha. Why can't it just give me some different animation instead of... Right, yeah. I don't know. Whatever, like, like it, it, and it could be as simple as going through the animation. <coughs> he does the like slice the face. The screen just fades to black, and it just gives me more of like a loading screen than it would give them. 
Right. Like, and just kind of like a sensor bar, but basically just like the screen just fades to black, like right when the like, you know, when the big action of the fatality happens. Yeah. So you can just leave some suspense, and I wonder what happened when that knife was about to hit his face, like because I don't. Yeah. Guess, I don't. I just don't want to see that. Right. I get you. Yeah, sometimes they can just be a little too much. Yeah. Or I guess a little bit more than too much, just just rough. <laughs> yeah, it's, just it's, a, rough. it's a way, way, for me at least, I mean, I, and I, yeah, obviously, like, I don't like scary games, and I don't really like gore, so obviously, it's, it's always going to be too much for me. I can watch people play it, but I do kind of cringe at the fatalities when I see them. Most yeah. of them, most of them aren't too bad. Although I saw one, and it was Sub Zero's, where he brings up the like ice spikes behind the player, and he kicks them onto the spikes, and then he jumps and steps on the chest, and the one spike pokes the eyeball out. <laughs> yeah. And I was, and like I was watching it, and like that one, I don't know why. Maybe it's because there's not a whole lot of blood, and like you know, pulsing flesh, as if like you know, with the tongue in the scorpion one. Like, that yeah. one didn't bother me as much, because it's, spikes going through a person is kind of just like, meh, because, again, right. it's not, it's not like, it's not gruesome, it's just kind of like, geez, he's dead. Yeah. But, like, right. then, the, but then, of course, they do the little eyeball thing at the end, and I was like, sons of bitches. <laughs> you... that, that doesn't, that doesn't unnerve me as much as the, like, face and brains thing. Beans, yeah, sliced out, and you see, you still see the tongue move or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What was it? There's a character I like to play as where uh, at his fatality at the end, he kicks your head off in the air, pulls out three arrows and shoots them through your head. And you just see it fall to the ground. Interesting. About to try his fatality out now, the newer one I just unlocked. There was one... Oh man, I can't remember. Here's the other thing that I... I like, I <coughs> don't quite get but it's mm-hmm. not, and this isn't a, this isn't even like a, a Mortal Kombat thing. I think other games do it. Like when you get like a good combo or a decent like hit, like a good critical hit or whatever, like it zooms in and it shows like the skull with the fractures and everything. Oh, like the X-ray, skull. yeah. Yeah, like that's not yeah. that's not a Mortal Kombat X thing. Like other games do it, but I just don't get why it needs to be done, and also the Shit. fact that like. So when brutal you, is, I guess. Well, no, but even when you do it, like, in theory, that has just killed the person. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what, I don't understand why. Yeah, those how, they, how are they still alive after yeah, that? Like, I just fractured, like, eight vertebrae and then crushed your fucking skull in. So how are you still alive? It's a good question. I never really quite figured out why those... They, like why that like I get I get how it's supposed to show like you're oh you're breaking the bones but then in that point I'd be like well that person's probably dead now because I don't think I can survive I don't think I'm gonna get back up and be in fighting you know form so I'm gonna share that one so okay so the one I just did he like he has a like a bow staff type thing and he sticks it in you your body explodes. Your arms and head go in there, and he just shoots them, and they just fall to the ground and slowly fall with arrows. But your hands still twitch. Gross. Yeah, and then the eyes like pulsate. That's, the That's thing, a bit man. much. It's just like, come on, stop it! I don't want to see that shit. Okay, never mind. Your eyes don't move, but the the hands still twitch. That's still still a bit too much. Yeah. But I mean, was it not even just violence in Mortal Kombat? But there's some games where it gets to be a bit too much. Yeah. But, uh, did you ever play that Punisher game on PS2? Oh yes, I did. Well, I played it on Xbox, so. But yeah, like still like. But that, again, that one it wasn't so realistic, but it was. Because they said they still kind of censored it. Yeah. Because you don't get to see everything that gets done, but still, it's like you could just grab a shotgun and shoot someone's head off. Yeah. With no remorse, it's like, geez. I know that's how the character is. Right. Damn. I just love the like when you'd walk into a certain area and the key NPCs would be like, "Oh shit, it's the Punisher," and then they'd yeah. run off because they'd be like, "Yeah, I'm probably gonna kill you." My favorite was the drill bit. 
Like, because, you know, at the end of every level in the Punisher or whatever, like, you had, like, that stare meter to get them to talk. So, like, it was, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you just, like, kind of held down the joystick to kind of lower the drill press. And it was, like, oh, the closer you got, the more they were ready to talk. And you had the meter. Yep. And, like, the second they started talking, I was just, like, fuck it. <laughs> or, like, the, you know, you throw them in the car crusher. And I'm just, like, yep, don't care. I don't even know. I don't even care what you have to say. I'm just going to throw you in the car crusher. Dang. But the, but the thing I like about that is, is if you didn't get the information or told you, hey, don't kill them, and you kill them, be like, okay, well, we're going to give you negative points for that because we told you not to kill them. Right. So there's still repercussions in killing people. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not like they're like, oh, cool, here, we're going to reward you with a new gun or something. And we'll shoot, uh, what else? What else is violent besides Mortal Kombat? Well, I mean, Borderlands has, you know, some. Yeah, that's true. Because you can, you, but you can turn it off, and then the, you know the yeah. characters just die. But even like in the way that like some of those characters explode into bits, it's not over the top, you know. No, yeah, because it's shell shaped. Yeah, the eye, the uh, the eye style, the art style kind of <laughs> does that too. Because obviously, when yeah, you think about, it's not realistic looking. It's yeah, exactly. Like. Cartoonish ish, I guess. Yeah. If you want to say that? Like The Last of Us, you know. If you still pretty like, bad. It's still, it's still the execution. Bad. But it's, I guess it's different because it's like third person perspective, you know? So it's like the explosions, That's true. the explosions aren't happening with like intense focus on that thing. Whereas like when you do the fatality, like it's zooming in, it's, it's getting up, you know, close and personal. True. Uh, true. So I think that probably makes for mitigating it a little bit so that it's not quite so bad because they're pretty <coughs> they're pretty ridiculous they like, are like because like you know you do the nail bomb and like legs and arms blow off and but again it's i guess it's different because there's not like maybe and i don't even really think there's that much blood in in mkx i mean there is but there isn't at the same time like yeah because you're just showing on the ground yeah. and you you're not going to sit there and just stay at the ground to see how much blood's yeah, there exactly so and there's, there's like little details, like if Scorpion burns you, you'll see the burn, but it, it'll go away right. later or whatever, temporary, whatever. Yeah. Well, and then there's like, uh, uh, the, I don't know who's, it's gotta be. Oh, jeez. It's not Scorpion, because Scorpion doesn't, does Scorpion shoot fire? Yes. Yeah. Is he the one that does the fire through the chest and then the heart fall? Yeah, that's the because yeah, the, that's and he slices your face off. Yeah, that's the one with the yes. face off. If they had just done that, the like oh, just left the it chest, there, and then he just died, or he like <laughs> kicked the heart and the heart or the heart exploded or something. You know, something like that. I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have been so bad. It's the face slice that's just that's what puts me like oh, puts, yeah. it's too much. Yeah, I can see that. So I don't. Not a fan. Yep. I was like, probably going to pick it up anyways, but like knowing right. that if there's no way to really kind of disable or skip that kind of stuff, I'm less right. likely to want to wanna pick it up even in the future if it was cheap. Yeah. I bought it more so because I like fighting games. Right, obviously. But you I get what you mean. It can be. It can be. Oh, God damn it, just do the fatality. It's like Persona? Oh, I love Persona. <laughs> but that's what, like, that's what I mean. Like, Persona is a fighting game I can get behind because it's not, you know. Oh yeah. There's alluding. It alludes to killing, but they don't show sure, you. Exactly. <clears throat> so yeah, that that one's that one's another topic for another episode. <laughs> exactly. It's the Persona episode. Bingo. But yeah, just they could definitely tone it down. I think I I'll agree with that. Like I, I I I don't mind it, but for some people that can be a little squirmish, but they still want to play the fighting game, have some kind of filler to at least turn the fatality off or at least tone it down where they just kind of zoom out. So like it'll do, you'll see the fireball go, but they just kind of you hear the scream in the background or something like that maybe, and you don't see the rest of it. Exactly. Something like that maybe. <laughs> but yeah. I guess I'm, I'm on both sides, I guess. And I mean, and even <laughs> like, uh, what was it, Marvel 
versus Capcom. Is that the one that we have? No. Injustice. Injustice yeah. does the, like, x-ray fracture thing. But again, it's not... I don't know. Maybe it's because they're... Those characters in the regular universes <laughs> don't have gore attached to them. Like, Superman's not, like, wrecking people left and right with, like, bloody gore. And, like, the, the Mortal yeah. Kombat characters only exist to, like, have these ridiculous... <laughs> Pretty things. much. So I mean, that again, that could be part of it too. Right. But still, yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, I don't know. It's always a it's always gonna be a bit much. And I think it, the problem is is like at what point do you, what what point will they have to be like we can't exceed? We've gone too far. Yeah, like we cannot exceed this graphical point mm -hmm. because it's at that point it is way too much. It's way too yeah. ridiculous. Right. So I don't know. I think that they could be approaching that very quickly. Right, yeah. Well, here's the funny thing in terms of, because it's still in terms of violence, they, it seems like there's more Grand Theft Auto related type incidents than there are like, oh, well, I'm going to do Scorpion's Fatality on someone because I thought it was cool. Well, I don't... Wait, what do you mean? Like, uh, there was something I saw. I was like, oh, GTA in real life and this dude... Like, he took uh, what cops, you know, incidents with cops in real life, and he did it in the game. So, like, he did, like, a comparison of, oh, well, what you can do in real life, you can do in the game. What you can do in the game, you can do in real life, but without consequences. So, like, there was some footage he had of a cop pulling up, and then the cop stopped, and you see another cop car just speed by and hit an innocent bystander and go through a wall. And then he does it in game. And he's like, well, see, you could do that without getting in trouble. So it's like, wait a minute. So you're promoting it, but you're not promoting it. You're saying it's okay. Wait, I'm confused. Maybe I didn't quite grasp this. What do you okay. mean between he's showing footage of things that happened in real life? Real life. And then he does it in game. Okay. In GTA 5, yeah. So he ended up with like dash cam footage of real life police events, yeah and then yep. reenacted it in and reenacted the video game for what purpose no idea just just, just to say oh hey this is what you can do in real life this is what you can do in the game without getting in trouble so I don't get the point. yeah like yeah like i'm kind of confused as to why you would why would you would do that yeah, yeah like i'm not probably planning on driving a person into a wall Right, yeah. But I just figured that's another thing towards the violence thing, and I don't get it. Like, why would you promote that? And then some people put up their Mortal Kombat videos, and it's like, oh, that's cool, it's awesome. But there's more views on something like that that's promoting real violence, whereas this is virtual violence, and it's getting less views. Right. Okay, so, I kind of see what you mean. Yeah. So just, what, I guess what I'm getting at is more people tend to look at something that's even more real than it is, oh, well, you could do that video game, whatever, no big deal. So I'm going to try this because you could actually probably try to do it. Right. Yeah, well, I doubt that there's any videos of people getting their faces sliced off on the internet. Well, you know what? I, I, you know, I don't even want to think about looking, up, looking it up. Um, I think, <laughs> but I yeah. think there's also a difference between GTA being also like hilarious you know you do stuff right. for, for stupid reasons because you do have that open world you know right open world no limits abilities to do whatever you want I mean, right that kind, of, that kind of happens in a lot of games you know people that's do, true yeah people over the that. top yeah i mean and it's i don't know it's definitely you know what <laughs> i would do in gta obviously is not what i would do in real life, in real but life. i can you know i can drive 100 miles an hour down the street and then mm -hmm. do a power slide right into a car right you know, i can yeah i can if a person if an npc bumps into me in the game i could be like yo what the fuck and then shoot him you know yeah. jump in my car and take off like yeah that probably does happen in real life but uh you know obviously there's a bit of yeah difference between that Violence is more amusing than like slicing a person's face off in Mortal Kombat. But either way, right. it's just like you know, it's one of those things. Like, 
you know, Grand Theft Auto, my guess is, when it when people start playing it in 4K on PCs, oh, you know, then that violence level is going to change a little bit. I bet you then people are going to be like, Jesus, you know, when, when we randomly kill people, it's kind of ridiculous. Right, yeah. Cause, like, I've, I mean, I've seen screens of people playing it in 4K, and it's pretty insane how good it looks, so. Right. I wonder if anyone's tried MKX in 4K. Because it's on PC, so. Uh, does it have support for 4K? No idea. Uh, so never mind then. But I'm sure someone will... Someone's going to... Either, either they're working on it or on it. whatever. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't imagine fucking fatalities in 4K. That's just too much. That'd be too much. I, yeah, I think that would be like instant barf. Yeah, that's just too much. But people are going to want... You know... Right. It's like, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Pretty much. Ooh, this is breaking news. Breaking uh, at the time that I'm breaking at the time that we say this. Probably not breaking by the time you hear it. It's a beta page for Black Ops Three. Ooh, snaps. Oh, pre-order for beta access. Well, that's Ow. not the same fucking. Thing. That's not the same thing, yeah. Yeah, like that's not the same thing. That's basically what they did with Destiny. Yeah. Pre-order to get the beta. Yeah, when it said like beta page live, I thought it meant like I could register to possibly end up in the beta. That's stupid. Ooh. Pointless. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Like, uh, there's a, there's another game coming out. I don't actually. I should really quickly Google it to find out. Oh, rock, no, it's Rocket League. Um, so there's this game that's coming out by Psyonix. And it's mm -hmm. called Rocket League. And basically, you're, little, you're not little remote control cars, because you are remote control cars, I suppose. <gasps> you're just rocket-powered battle cars, but you're in, like, a dome, and it's, like, soccer. <laughs> Interesting. And you can, like, boost your car, and you get to drive the soccer ball into the other team's goal. Um... But it's sweet because you can like jump and do 360s with your car and like dash boost things, and you can like you know hit the soccer ball. And it's pretty, it's actually a lot of fun. Like, I registered for the closed beta, and I didn't think I was gonna get in because the time I saw the link, there was already it had oh, been, right, it had already been a couple hours, so I figured like, yeah, there's probably no. No point to join this. Yeah, so I was like, you know, whatever, though. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And later that day, I got an email with a code, so I downloaded it, and it's, nice. it's actually really fun. Like, Pretty I, solid. I don't know if the game is going to change for amount of players, because right now the most you can play is 3v3. Ah, But if, gotcha. it, if it changed and it was like maybe 5v5 or 4v4, right. would It'd be pretty cool. I think three three is a little tough because it's just not that many people, you know. And mm -hmm. I think this could be a fun game with a lot of people. But even more people, yeah. You know, even when I was just playing it last night, um, still pretty good. It's still pretty good. Like I was actually like, this isn't bad. Like I'll probably, I'll probably buy it because I imagine it'll probably be like fifteen or twenty bucks. So nice. But it's it's actually really cool. The only thing I wish is that I wish you could power slide, and I haven't found a way to do that. Oh, you can't power slide through? Yeah. Hmm. Um, it's got online and local split screen, which is nice. Oh, nice. So, Pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, Reality Pales, he's in the, the beta as well. And so I saw him playing it, and I tweeted, and I'm like, oh, we should party up. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, too bad the servers are down. Because the, the servers are only up, like, two hours a day. Oh, um, cause they must oh, be, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, cause they must just be doing like initial testing and it's <coughs> whatever. So yeah, they only had it up for like two hours. So I got to play like a couple matches and it's actually mm -hmm. pretty fun. I was annoyed though, because like I got into a match and before I could even like look at the screen, it booted me for being idle. But I think I might've been sitting for like 15 seconds. Right. So that was kind of annoying. Um, but it is actually really cool. Like, I was actually, like, at first I was kind of like, rocket cars and soccer? This sounds so dumb. Oh, right. And then I played it and was like, oh, shit. This is actually, <laughs> actually kind of cool. 
I could get behind this. Yeah, I can get behind this. Because you can, you can also, if you really want to be fun, just race right into the other team's cars, and they'll blow up, and then they have oh, to, nice. like, respawn in. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like everybody's driving to hit this soccer ball, and it's like you hit it, and the physics are actually pretty good, so the ball will go flying, and it'll go in whatever direction, but it's you're in a dome, so, like, it can bounce off the ceiling or the sidewalls, and then you got to kind of anticipate where it's going to land. Right, but you also got to watch out for other people who are just going to hit you to push you out of the way, so that they can hit the. Ball. Yeah, so that way they can. Yeah. Well, then I imagine it's just going to turn to a giant demolition derby. Uh no, because everybody still likes getting getting points, and there's like the problem is is what happens is, is you all get into like this big mashup, and then there's that one person who gets a good shot on the ball. Oh, and you can't fucking stop right. it. That's true. You know, everybody's like one time I boosted to stop the like to try and save the ball, and I ended up hitting it into the net. <laughs> I scored on my own team. Shit. And I was like, but it was one of those things, and then it, you know, then it shows the goal. It shows like an instant replay, and like you're watching it, and it's just like you, and then like there's my car just like boosting towards the fucking <laughs> soccer ball, and it's like boom right into the net. Or the virtual nice. net, because it's all kind of like arena. Domes and hexagons and futuristic. Right. It's pretty. It is really fun though, and it actually looks really good. Like I didn't notice any uh, graphical issues when I was playing it. It was just kind of. That's good. It's kind of just yeah. It was pretty sweet. So. Nice. I was, I was enjoying that last night. I've also, Sounds fun. I've also been playing another game, but that one's under embargo, so I got a hold. Right. Can't talk about that. It's weird. Fair enough. I'm like on the fence. Hmm. It's kind of, it's like, without saying too much, my problem is, is that <clears throat> I hate games that expect you to know things that it has no, like, oh. it doesn't tell you anything and you're somehow expected to figure shit out. But not like in a Zelda way. Because Zelda, Zelda does give you hints on how to do shit. Like, right. people say really weird and, like, innocuous statements to you mm-hmm. in one area of the game, but that eventually makes sense when you get to another part of the game, because you're like, oh, right, I talked to that person, and they said this. And like, well, that's a hint, whereas in this particular game, there was one part, and I had been trying to figure it out, and trying to figure it out, and then finally I had to consult with a another person who's also uh doing the game and they were like oh you just do this and i was like well how the fuck? seriously I'm like, how the fuck would it i'm like how would i have even known that that was a thing i could do right yeah it's like how would i even know like, that i was like i didn't even know that wasn't like that was a, a game option because huh. it's like at no other point in the game do you ever have to really do that so i was super confused uh I'd imagine. after that i was able to kind of bang through that whole section because that was the one thing preventing me from progressing forward in the story yay <laughs> that's always fun right the other part about the game that's that is a cool thing is that it's uh there's multiple storylines that are going at the same time uh, and you can actually just kind of save and switch between the two nice the only thing is is once you complete mm-hmm. one portion of the storyline you have to just finish the other one you can't progress ah uh... So gotcha. basically, you Those have things. to do both of their. You have to do both of the storylines mm-hmm. uh, before you can go to the next, like their next set. Uh, Whereas, but if you wanted, you could switch between the two. Except I don't advise it because it would make it even more confusing. It's just confusing. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So you gotcha. Just have to like pick one, do one, pick one, do the other one. Right. Just kind of go with it. Yeah. But otherwise, it's pretty I, good. I don't think I would probably have got the game but it's not mm. like the story is interesting i just you know, the game kind of, it's not your yeah the cup. game is just a little frustrating because it's like how would i have known and maybe it's just me maybe i'm just dumb maybe no just, idea maybe i'm just straight stupid because uh, <laughs> i've no, like i'm just sitting there like there's no, like there, it's not even if you like hovered over certain things in like mm-hmm. the game or in your inventory that there's like a little help button or like a you know uh some sort of dialogue that might allude to you being able to use certain things and interact with certain environments. Like, none of that kind of exists. Hmm. You are you are kind of left to figure it out all on your own. And I'm just like, some right. of the stuff, I'm just like, how would anybody figure that out? 
Right, how would anyone know that? <laughs> like, I ended up having to backtrack through, like, you know, what would have been, like, two hours worth of gameplay to, to oh, go and get a thing that I didn't know I was supposed to get. Damn. Like, I, I was in those areas, and, I, and, like, I figured that something had to exist in those areas, but, like, nothing would have told me, like, that's what I had to do. And it's... it's like, thanks. Yeah, so, so that's... But Thanks, I mean, Obama. That's, that's um, it's embargoed until uh, the twenty eighth. So next this Tuesday. So next, this yeah. Tuesday, rather. Um, so you could probably talk about it then. Yeah. Then no, no, no. Then we then I can talk about it. Um, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's that's that's that. So that was. I mean, that's violence and games and ooh. So now we can talk about Silent Hills. Silent Hills, which. Kind of sad because I really did want to play that. Yeah. So, for those listening, there was a falling out with Kojima and Konami a little while back, which, which we, it's it still isn't even really true to confirm that he doesn't work there or he's been fired or he's starting off on his own thing. It's just that yeah, there was like a little bit of the things like the tweet that he sent, like this is goodbye or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And then let me see if I can find it real quick because I bet you it's still in his tweets. Um, Maybe yeah, unless they had him delete it. I don't remember. Oh, the tweet. Oh, it said heading off, and it was the the picture of the guy getting into the chopper in Metal Gear. And yep. So basically, that happened. And then there was this whole Kojima left, and then, mm. you know, Kojima Studios became Konami, San Diego, or whatever it is. Yep. Uh, and then they even changed the taglines on some artwork for the game. Yep. Took all the Kojima Productions yeah, out. Kojima, yeah, because it was Koji Pro, Kojima Productions, right. And they yep. changed it to, like, Konami, Took all that out. California, or whatever. Yep. The Metal Gear... Page got either taken down or changed or something like that. And, and like, so basically everyone was like, oh, well, Kojima's out. What does this yep. mean for the future of the franchise? Blah, 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 blah. And then there was a thing where he said, like, I'm still dedicated to Metal Gear Solid Five, But that was kind of all he said. Right. So fast forward to... Recently, now, pretty much. Yeah, now, yeah. And Guillermo del Toro said at... Allegedly said at the San Francisco... Oh, my God, let me get this right. Oh okay, so yeah. This was uh, this is a I'm on hardcoregamer.com and this is by Steve Hanley. And this was today. Mm-hmm. And it says bad news all around for Silent Hills today. Earlier in the morning, Konami announced that they would be removing the PT demo, which is playable teaser, which was the Silent Hills teaser game mm-hmm. that's on the PSN. <laughs> They're removing the demo at the end of the month. While there was hope that this was simply because it was a limited time offer, it looks like this could have indeed been the beginning of the end for the project. Guillermo del Toro has stated, quote it's not going to happen, and that breaks my greasy heart, end quote. That quote Sad came day. from a guy on Twitter who was at the San Francisco Film Festival. And that was at 12 this morning. Sad day. Um, and that's whoever TV's Matt Hacking is. Hmm. He says he is Twitter, says he is a photojournalist, news photographer, cameraman, and he is from Fresno. He only has 450 followers and 3,000 tweets, so who knows how? How? Yeah, but he's been tweeting stuff all day the past few days from the um, San Francisco Film Festival, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So who knows? It could be true. Could be true. I mean, could be true. Could be false. Yeah. But it still mm. certainly makes for an interesting discuss, uh, discussion, discovery, announcement. Right. Plus, the thing about press is sometimes they end up twisting words just to get views and stuff like that. That's true. I mean, he put it in quotes, so you'd assume that he's doing it verbatim. But right. A little Guess we'll, we'll find creative out. Creative ways. Yeah, so it's definitely weird. Um, 
you know, you go from having PT, the playable teaser, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it's Guillermo del Toro and, and Kojima working on this, and then <coughs> Kojima says nothing and seemingly leaves Konami because why would you change all this stuff if he wasn't going right. to be around? So, mm -hmm. Or was or he was forced out. Could be one or the other. I mean, we don't no no, you know, Koji. Uh, Koji no one else, Konami but Konami like and Koji BS know the truth. Statement, but it's like obviously this is definitely between closed doors between them. Right. And or they know the truth. Now Guillermo del Toro saying it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what that is. I mean, this could totally be them stirring up debate to see if it's worth continuing with this mm -hmm. project. Yeah. If Ko if maybe if Kojima just wants to bail out now and he doesn't want to stick around and he'd just be mm -hmm. like, well, I don't think anyone's going to buy the game anyways. And then Del Toro could just be like, well, let's, let's you know, throw yeah. a, a wrench in the gears and see what people say. Let's see how they react. And maybe, yeah. you know, that's me being positive. Because Kojima's trolled us in the past, so plenty of times. So, so I, we'll find I, find out it's all up in the air i guess to say i kind of hope we're being trolled and they're kind of you know pun, no pun intended silently creating their own studio and just kind of keeping it under wraps that's but, true I mean, the problem with that is legally, I imagine there's a lot of trademark and copyrights and nonsense going in because I don't know that Kojima owns necessarily the rights to all the Metal Gear stuff. So right. So then, so now we could end up with Metal Gear Solid: Phantom Pain being the last MGS we get. If we, I mean, I, there's no way they're not going to release it, but it could be. Ending oh no, they yeah, being the last one we're going to get because now Kojima is going to leave if he does if that's what's happening and then you know konami owning most of the rights to it and him only only, right. only owning some of it and then it's like well who's gonna do who's gonna let the other person go and you're gonna have like a sony pictures owning spider-man and not giving up oh, yeah. the rights to marvel up until uh, right now some deal gets cut yeah, yeah. well because i know konami allegedly said don't worry we're gonna continue with metal gear you know don't fret this and that but that's kind of what Kona or Capcom did with Mega Man, and guess what happened with that? They just they're like, no, nah, don't care, shutting it down. We're shutting down the studio on that. We're just ending it. So, we'll so see. I I kind of hope they don't do that. Like, don't right. tell us you're going to continue and then just quit because you think, oh, no one's going to want it when clearly everyone wants it. So. Yeah, it's a fantastic series. There's no reason not to keep making them. But at the same time, if you are going to remove, you know. Kojima, it will right. affect the way that the series goes. I mean, oh yeah. So, and maybe, maybe that's why they use Kiefer instead of David Hayter, because this is Konami's mm -hmm. way of creating a new Metal Gear Solid. It's true. In the same way that they were creating a new Silent Hills. It's true. You know, maybe Kojima was just setting this all up so he could literally leave. Because I still think that Kojima will end up directing movies. I really do. I'm surprised he's not, yeah, because I know he's a he's a huge he's film a buff. Movie buff. Yeah, yeah, that's why like Metal Gear is like a fucking movie. Exactly, it's like and he was working with Del Toro, so it's like it kind of fits. That like it makes sense. Like, maybe he's just like screw it, I'm just gonna do movies. Right, Silent Hills is gonna become a movie, not a game. Yeah. And in the same vein, you know, uh, Amy Hennig, who wrote mm -hmm. a lot of the Uncharted. So oh yep. She didn't write all of them. And they all mm -hmm. came out pretty good as a cohesive series. I mean, some right. say, you know, two is the best, and some say three was really short, but some say yeah. one is the best because it was the first, and everyone says Uncharted <laughs> Golden Abyss sucks, even though I don't think Henry wrote that. But, uh, you know, and now you've got Uncharted 4 being done by Neil and Bruce. <laughs> so right. It's like, I'm sure it'll be fine. But at the same time, yeah. you know, You've got to look at it as if Kojima is done for reals, mm. my guess True. is he's left enough of a legacy in place that, you know, Konami's going to... Things will be things. fine. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fine without him. Or whatever this game is going to be is going to segue into a place where it allows a little bit more... True, yeah. Expansion or whatever they call well, it. Well, because I know at first, 
I believe three, he wasn't even going to do it. He was going to let some other studio Konami take care of it. And then instead he decided to oversee it. And then he ended up actually doing stuff on it. Mm. Same with some of the PSP stuff. He wasn't even going to do it. I wish they hadn't done some of the PSP stuff. I, I liked it. I didn't mind. Hard game. God damn it. Oh, acid. No, that I, I don't count that as the actual stuff, but I mean like uh portable ops and stuff like that. Oh yeah. yeah. Stuff that actually was, I, I guess, yeah. actual part of the story. Yeah, because I know he wasn't going to do anything with that, but then he decided to. So, like I said, he's, he's said no in the past, and he's like, well, never mind. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's like they could just be like, we'll throw a heap of money at you, and he could be like, done. Yeah. But he doesn't strike me. I mean, he strikes me as the type of guy who's not swayed by money. He's more, you know, he has more integrity. He than feels that. passionate about it. Yeah. He'll stand. But if not, he's and like, I well, you know, that's huge to it. Gotta have oh yeah! Money. Oh, he's got. Care. I'm sure he's got plenty of money. <laughs> At this point, it definitely probably isn't about the money for him. It's more so. Is this still my passion? Do I still want to do, do it? Right. Yeah. So. When I guess, yeah, you know, at some point you have to, you know, do you want to walk away or? Right. Or you know. Yeah, so. at one point he's kind of just got to be like, well, is this even, you know, is this what I, is this what I want to do? Is this where I want to be? You know, he's been doing this for so long. Since I was a damn kid. It's weird, too, because he looks like he's, he looks so young. Yeah. He looks like the hip, he looks, and he's also super in tune with, like, everything. Like, he's wired sure. in. Like, he always looks... Like, he's, you know, I'm not saying he's, like, a good-looking dude, but, like, he's fashionable. He's always been fashionable. Right. You know, like, he always is with the times, which is mm -hmm. kind of impressive for somebody who's been in the industry so long that, like, you know, you see some people that are just kind of set in whatever trend that they happen to really like at the time. And, like, he's managed to evolve with every single it's true. thing that's going on. This is true. Agreed. Agreed. So, I mean, I personally won't play Silent Hills because it's a scary game. So, you know, I'll be upset if it gets canceled because I think the series has, you know... It's such a good series. Yeah, but... like the series. I like the stories behind the games, you know? Because they're I couldn't, I could, so messed I've up, watched, though. Yeah, like I've watched playthroughs and, of people playing it because I can, I can stomach that. But, right, like yourself. Uh it's a good adrenaline yeah, rush. That's what I like about horror I'll games. Sad, I'll be sad to see it come to a halt if this is literally the end of it, you know? Right. Uh, My question is, with PT, if it's one of those things where if it's still in your library, you can still download it, regardless of it being removed. Well, that's what I was thinking, but I don't know. But if, I don't, it's been, yeah. if it's been removed It'll from the you. server, you might not be able to re-download it because the files just right. won't be there. So it kind of depends. Just, are they removing well, the ability for you to purchase it, or are they removing the ability for it to be re-downloaded. There you go. And my guess is it's yep. probably... Redownloading it right now. Yeah, well, you have till the end of the month, so you've got... Oh, it's not... At, it wasn't officially removed from the store yet? End of the month, yeah. End of the month. Oh, okay. I thought it was already removed. That's why. No, no, no. Okay, well, I redownloaded it just to... Just because. Just because. <laughs> so that's... Yeah, I mean, and it does, it is sad to see him go in whatever fashion it is that they agreed on. Right. I just imagine mean, he wanted to do something else. And... Right. And the, I mean, the good thing is no one's slandering either. No side is slandering each other. So it's not like they're like, oh, well, right. F Kojima that, F Kojima this, and, yes, you know, he. Me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's more so, well, you know, we're just going our separate ways. Yeah, I think the, well, and I think that's the kind of the cool part about the respect that. Both companies, both right, companies, yeah, they Konami and Kojima have earned throughout the industry is that more people are concerned with what happens to the projects they were working on rather than like shitting on one or the other. You know, people right. are like, "Fuck you! I can't believe you left Konami." They're more like, "Are you still going to make this thing that I want?" Because I know you still have the ability to make it awesome. You mm -hmm. know, you're not. There's, you know, it's not like he's leaving because he 
he made a bad game, he's probably leaving because he wants to do something else that he can't. True. You know, and Konami, same deal. People respect them. People are understanding that they, you know, they're a business. They need to make games to make money and, you know, whatever. So it's kind of cool in that sense that people aren't really hassling either one of them. Right, yeah, both sides are seeing respect. Like, Please tell me these things are still existing because I still want to give you money for my wallet. Yeah, exactly. I still want you to take my money for stuff like that. So. I guess we'll find out then. Yeah, I mean, that's just we just kind of got to wait it out and see. Yeah, because I know there was that whole rumor where, well, now we don't know if he's actually leaving. So... Yeah, it's like it wasn't an actual split up. Like he's still here. It's just we were changing stuff up. So Probably because he wants to leave. Right. Yeah. But I guess we'll find out. We'll find out sooner or later the truth. So I'm sure someone's gonna, you know, fucking hassle him about it in an interview, and they be like, "Oh, okay. Well, I got you to say it, and I'm gonna report it." Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, and he. The, my guess is they both are just being smart about it and either not right, not taking or they're telling yeah. people if you ask no comment questions, we're walking away, and you eat the interview that you have, and you probably yeah, pretty get much another one. So right. yeah, don't waste your time. Yeah, be like the. I don't know if you saw the tweet that I sent out about uh, Robert Downey Jr. The Jr. walking out of the video. Yep. Out so good. Yep. It's like, it's like don't. It's like we're not here to talk about my. My, my uh, personal life. We're here to talk about oh, Avengers. Movie. Yeah, yeah. It's no. just like when he said, he was like, you know, your foot's tapping. You should probably get with the questions. You yeah, the question. You have just as much time as everybody else. Right. It's like, are we promoting? What are we doing? Yeah. It's like, that was bye. Awesome. Yeah, that was good. Bye. I got the end. He he made it seem like he was gonna hit him, but he just tapped him on oh, the he shoulder. Just him on the shoulder. He's like, yeah, just getting a little dinosaur in here. So. Yeah. Like, but I mean, like, if a guy like flinched, like. Robert was going to hit him, but he oh, just I'm pat him on the because he probably didn't yeah. know what the hell was about to happen. Yeah. Yeah, don't, you know, don't ask the questions you know you're not going to get an answer to. Right. <laughs> don't ask, just don't ask stupid questions. Is really yeah. Weird. You know, have a little respect. You know, I get, oh, that, yeah, I sure. get that as interviewers... You know, uh, you want the juicy details. Well, and... no, no, it's not that he wants the juicy details. He has his own agenda. And this is like... Oh, this, yeah, This true. is me jumping into... Uh, political mode he was asking questions about his political views because he originally had made a statement years and years ago saying you don't go from i think the quote was you don't go through from a two thousand dollar a night hotel <laughs> to a penitentiary and come out a liberal mm. he's like it just doesn't happen and so right. the reporter was trying to press downey to basically say that he was a conservative because uh, all gotcha. appearances Downey seems to lean that way. Right. From from all the other things that I've read about him and things he said in, in reports and the fact that he did go to prison and, and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, yeah. Not that I think that going to prison makes you not a liberal, but it certainly changes your views on certain things. Mm -hmm. So that particular interviewer, that guy, has done this to to other people. Like there was a there's a there was a link in another article I read about him and how he does like he brings up political stuff not necessarily in the right way, manner um, you know in a in a just in an attempt to kind of not necessarily out people as conservatives but kind of um you know throw them off guard I suppose mm -hmm. so Downey just wouldn't play ball and I fucking respect right. the hell yeah. out of him for it like I don't oh, care yeah. what his political affiliation is I think it's awesome that he's a conservative. Um, the problem is, is being a conservative in Hollywood is kind of like a death sentence. Yeah. And what, and what many, what many actors who are comfortable with saying that they're conservatives have said, you, people are missing out that many actors in Hollywood are actually conservatives. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them will never say it because it oh, no. God, yeah. you know, it'll end their career. And right. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know, then people will shit on them and the loose fans, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of yeah. unfortunate that, like, because they have a political affiliation that, like, people will be like, I'm not going to watch Right it. now, you're just the worst person in the world. Um, but 
it's but it's true. A lot of a lot of these actors are have conservative views, which is cool. But I, you know, I respect the hell out of Downey for just being like, "Bye, see ya." Yeah, see ya. See ya. He was he was respectful. He was just like, "Look, this, you know." Yeah, it's not what I'm here for. It's not what I'm here for. So, yeah. If this is if this is where we're gonna go. I'm just gonna I'm gonna see myself right. Yeah. I'm just gonna... So, yeah, good for him. Because I think you can hear his public the background saying, he, "Yeah, no, no, no." Because he's yeah, because he's looking at he's looking at her when he looks off the camera. He's looking at her to be like, well, "Let's go." Know. And then she basically was probably just like, "All right, time to go. Let's go." Yeah, pretty much. Like he's not. Yeah, no, it's not what we're here for. Because <laughs> yeah. so I, we got I nothing. imagine that might it might actually t- take a toll on him as a person too. Like, who right. The fuck, who the fuck wants to be asked about like their time with you know struggling with drug addiction? And right. Exactly. Being imprisoned for it when you're about to promote a movie that's gonna make him more millions of dollars. Like he's probably super right. psyched about having a second chance and being successful at it and mm-hmm. making all this money. Not that I think he cares. He probably enjoys the money, but like. He's got a he's got a second chance that's going super well for him. Like, why the fuck does he want to go back to like right? Yeah, that shit. Like, I'm yeah. sure it's it's always kind of present in his mind. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things. Like, I feel like he was probably just like, what the fuck? Like, this isn't why I'm here. Move yeah. I, yeah. Let's, are we doing this or not? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then the the only other non gaming thing that I that I also think is awesome is the uh, protein world debacle. Oh yeah. <laughs> With the did you go look at the ad the beach body thing? I haven't yet, but okay. So the, it's just a stark yellow background with a you know attractive, very fit female in a yellow bikini, and the text mm-hmm. says, "Are you beach body ready?" <laughs> you know, because they're a protein company. They sell fitness stuff. Right. And everyone was like, oh, this is fat shaming. You're saying that if you're fat, you can't go on the beach to wear a bikini. And, like, they, they're they all like, no, actually, we're not. We're just saying, yeah. are, are you, you know, beach are body you, ready? If you're, yeah. if you're a fitness person, are you, you know. And, and like, some people are just like, uh, they're a fitness company. Why would they show a fat person on the on the ad? And again, it doesn't. It doesn't say anything. It just asks a question: Are you beach body ready? Ready. Yeah. You know, and if you think you're beach body ready, then that's it. Boom, you're good. Go to the beach. Right. Have fun. Like, and the best part is they were like, "Oh, it's probably run by like a bunch of dudes," and the Twitter account was actually run by a female. But now <laughs> the CEO and the head of marketing have taken over it, and like they're just, they're awesome. They're tweeting stuff at people like, oh, "Here, let me pull it up real quick." Um, did I spell protein wrong? Yes, I totally did. Uh, protein. Protein. Um, <laughs> so, and I don't know if they changed this after the fact, but the, the Twitter header banner is just the butt of the girl with protein held on her bikini. Which That's funny. Uh, Pretty so they good. Retweeted, they just retweeted this one 20 minutes ago, and it says, Never heard of your company till you stood up to these ass clowns. I'll support you against the threats, harassers, and doxers. Um, why is protein world getting so much stick when magazines like cosmopolitan and their advertisers do the same if not worse right photoshop women and then they put well and they posted an image i gotta find it they posted an image and it was like 10 different magazines Hmm. that had like basically the same type of covers (coughs) right because it was one of their it was one of their responses to a person like we're not the oh here it is, um, they put hashtag not a new concept and it was so there's Heat magazine, Self magazine, Men's Health, Shape, Cosmopolitan, OK magazine, Women's Health, and Seventeen, and all of them have covers with men. Well, there's only Men's Health is the only one with a guy on it, but so but, yeah. they're all attractive women in bikinis, and it's like. Bikini body detox. Build a beach body. Sixty miracle food foods. Your beach body in seven days. Get a celebrity beach body. Uh, bikini body confidence. Bikini ready. Five ways to lose fifteen pounds. Like it's total 
bullshit. Like, people are just looking for any excuse to fucking start a fight. Right. And I'm getting so sick of it. Yeah, that's pretty goddamn annoying. So, now their sales are up a bazillion. Because they're, they're even tweeting it. Like, well, thanks for making sure that people know what we're out here. Um, right. Uh, let's see. They retweeted a tweet. Your ad for Protein World gives me something to aspire to. Doesn't shame me. Makes me want to work harder. Love it. Uh, right. Uh, glad you like the products from Protein World. Because then, oh, so they had, so, you know, Beach Body Ready was like a hashtag. And then, then it was each body's ready. Mm-hmm. Like, as in, like, everybody's ready for the beach. Ah. Uh. You know. <laughs> Because it's like, well, and then it's like when you think like there's the hashtag fit fam, you know, for like mm-hmm. people who are in shape and they want to tweet about like being in fit, you know, being in fit, being in shape. So it's just so stupid. Yeah, it's pretty I dumb. Like this makes no This was a tweet they retweeted. It makes no sense. Society has defined what a beach body is, not them. Obesity is a growing problem. Protein world is setting goals. Right. You know. They're not bullshitting anybody. Yeah, and, like, it's just so annoying because, like, even this one, this Protein World ad business is ridiculous. Obviously, you're going to use a gym fit model to sell a fitness product. Duh. <laughs> you know, this one, for real. You never Protein World never said you had to look like the girl to wear a bikini or step on a beach, but would you advertise with less than perfect? Again, like, well, I don't know why this common sense shit exists, like, it's just like you can't say anything now without somebody being like, "No, you, you must mean that you hate everyone because you." Yeah, hate someone's always gonna butt hurt. Yeah, it's like some, and then of course the troops are gonna rally, and then it's like, mm-hmm. I just can't stand it. Like they asked if you're beach body ready, they weren't talking to fat people; they were talking to the people who will want to stay in shape. Yeah, how is that fucking fat shaming? Yeah, and why why is it okay to fit shame? Is my question because you're just shaming right. all the people who want shaming to in general. Like, just stop it. Just leave it alone. If it doesn't bother you, okay, don't say anything. But if it bothers you, then fucking deal you know, with it. If it's my problem. Like, why? If it yeah, I mean, if they're then... actually if they're actually attacking you, okay, you know, figure it out, deal with it. Yeah, but but if they're not attacking you, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Leave it alone. They're not attacking anybody. They're just saying like, hey, yeah, like, ready? protein world's got you covered. Right. Fucking Protein World gets my shout out. Protein World absolutely ten times over gets. Because yeah, because they're standing up for themselves, you know. Because it's bullshit. Yeah. Because they're not attacking anyone for one, like you said. And yeah, just and, and like for me, like I see that I I saw all the stuff and like now I think I'm gonna go buy some of the stuff because they have like special vitamins and stuff you can mix into your food and I'm like, well, I've been trying to get in shape because mm-hmm. like. For me, I just don't think I'm in shape enough. And people are always like, oh, you're thin. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel it, you know? Right. I don't, I don't look in the mirror and feel thin. And people could say that that's more like a psychological thing. And sure, maybe it is. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't care, you know? My ideal, right. I do not have the ideal body that I want to have. So, like, I'm going to keep working towards it. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not going around being like, oh, you're so fat. You should lose some weight. Like, no, I do have no. a problem with obesity. And I think that there are really fat people who really should lose weight. Because it's just years off. I mean, it, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's just years off your life. Literally. Sure. You know, for sure. every, I think somebody told me, and I can't, that this, I could, again, this could be somebody, something somebody told me and they could be wrong, but they said for every pound of weight on your body it's four pounds of pressure on like your knees Mm -hmm. and so basically the more weight you carry if your you know legs and stuff aren't strong enough to hold it it's just a shitload of weight on your knees yeah it's just gonna you know you're just gonna wear down over time it's like right i don't know i mean again you're carrying too much weight yeah it's like you know, you unless you have really, really, really strong legs, but you're still fat for some reason. Like, like again, if you want to be fat, that's fine. But don't tell me I can't be thin. Right? Yeah. Don't tell me out. Don't call me out for being in shape. Yeah, because I'm not calling Try- you out. I just it's whatever. Right. So here's the thing. Like again, no. Like people don't die from being healthy. You know, people die from like a thing that happened to them. People mm-hmm. don't die from being in good health. They die from, like, an, an 
unexpected heart attack or a car accident or they hit their head. Like, they didn't die for having, like, good blood pressure, good body fat, you know, and muscles. Right, people, yeah, exactly. People die on a regular basis from weight-induced problems like diabetes, you know, like, so it's just frustrating that there's this issue with fat. Right. So, I mean... And I, so if you're fat, then do something about it. Don't yeah. just sit there and complain. Like, I'm not gonna go tell a fat person, like, you should lose weight. Like, no, it's your own fucking fault if you don't want to. And that's right, yeah. Fine. That's on you. You can do it, but don't tell everyone else that because they want to promote being this way is, like, that they can't. I just get frustrated. Right. I just get frustrated that everybody has to get in someone's face about shit that doesn't affect them really at all. It's true. This is true. So, this and, is now, true. I, and yeah, am I a little hypocritical on the situation? Sure. But I mean, I'm not at the same time because I don't really go out of my way to tell people that they're that if they're fat, they should be they should lose weight. If my right, friend, you know, no. I have some friends who've asked me, and I've been like, yeah, I think you're a little overweight. I'm not gonna lie to you. Right. No. Yeah. Because you're not gonna bullshit your friend. Yeah, what the fuck? Like, and and whatever. Call me an asshole, but like, you ask my opinion, I'm gonna give it to you. Like, right. Yeah. No. Exactly. You know, it's, exactly. And, 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 and it's for the you don't want to don't reason, ask. It's for the simple reason that it is taking years off your life. Like all mm -hmm. of, all this unnecessary you know fat that you're carrying around like it does take a toll on your body and it does lead to things like diabetes and that's mm -hmm. gonna change the way the rest of your life is lived so why wouldn't you just take a little bit of time every day to do a little bit of work so that you don't have to worry about it? it's just like built it's like preparing your financial future you know mm -hmm. you put money into your savings account for a rainy day so why right, not walk exactly. 10 minutes a day do 20 push-ups, do some sit-ups, do some jumping jacks. You know, right, do, something, do yeah. Five minutes of jumping jacks every day. Even mm -hmm. though that's not a crazy lot amount. but if Right, but still, it builds up it's, every it's just, day. Yeah, it's just, it's just something that you're doing. It's five minutes every day, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, maybe later as you get older, you change it to ten minutes. Right, yeah, you, you just add it something up. else, or at least, you know, it's just, it's just something. It's like, I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking for something. Right, yeah, exactly. So. I feel you, dog. I feel you. But I think we should call it there before I dig myself into a hole. <laughs> right, and then we end up actually pissing me off. But, I, but at the same time, like, do whatever, it's you, just, do whatever you want, really. Do whatever you want. No, yeah, at the end of the day, it's your choice. If you want to be overweight, if you're overweight and happy, be overweight and happy. Who cares? That's your life. Your choice. You do what you got to do, you know. But don't shame us for doing what we want to do. Wanting them gains. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Hashtag gains all day. Yeah, they, they, they get a little life lesson for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Shout outs. <laughs> Shout outs. Hodge twins. Hodge twins. <laughs> gains. I yeah, fuck it. Write them down. So twins. That I know. No. Hodge twins. Hodge twins. I'm doing Protein World. This is the fitness shout out. Yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna shout out Sarah because I always, of course. I always uh, shout out Sarah. Six, six, she's, she's getting seven. some gains. She gets up every morning and goes to the gym. Every morning. It's be looking good. I fucking struggle to get up like at a reasonable hour every day so go to the gym. i'm usually always up at nine so there's no excuse for me to not i get up between like not, eight and ten to not do anything but see i have a nautilus machine at work so i just i can work out at work some dumbbells for like 10 minutes do some squats, right do some do the bench press do the the pec thing you know but yeah and that's that's kind of my thing like, chest I'd love to get and, yeah. more uh consistent and like mm -hmm. do it for longer periods of time rather than just like 10 minutes here 10 minutes there right but i can see the difference like right I yeah see the difference that doing it for like a couple days in a row makes so right you can see the work you're putting in yeah it makes me want to do it more it's just like you get done with work and you're like do i want to stay for like half an hour to work out no i want to go home and like nap uh, <laughs> but like i gotta get out of that i gotta get out of that you just gotta get oh out yeah, of that, yeah. So. All right, so we're going to shout out the Hodge Twins. They're on YouTube. They're on Twitter. I'll put the links in the in the video notes. We're going to shout out Protein World because fuck yeah, Protein World. 
stand up for what you believe in. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to yeah. shout out Sarah Joy, Sarah, who runs the PDP podcast and the Geek Mates. We're also going to shout out Dave, her partner in crime on the podcast. Ziggy Ziggs. It's Z I G G Z I G G Y Z I G G. Yeah. Um, Ziggs. Sarah Joy is C E R A J O I. Uh, and, um, yeah, I think that's, are we good? I think that's it, yeah. All right, so that'll do it for episode 19 of the Disconnected Gamers Podcasts. And in true yeah. Robert Downey Jr., we're not going to catch you on the flip. It's just going to be, bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>